Hey everybody, this is David at Barnyard Bees. I got a couple little tips for you today. Uh, we have packages, and like we do every week, we have packages. And sometimes, the, if the customer, if they don't show up to pick them up, or we have them in the floor too long, after about a week, they will die off. It's just natural, and that's just how it goes with these bees. They they stay in the, the package for. After even even as soon as you shake them and you look in the bottom as soon as you put the lid on and the feeder can and the queen and lay it to the side and look over five minutes later dead bees will start showing up immediately it's just how it is so when you get your packages uh, they will always have dead bees in them they always have some very few but but always will have some so just so uh, kind of get that out to newbies that's never done beekeeping kind of give them an idea now these have more than normal because these have been there a little bit too long in the store so we try to get the, our leftovers put back in our yard as quick as possible sometimes things happen we don't get to it right away and as you can see right here there's some dead ones there uh, this package here also has uh, a few dead ones in the bottom and and so does this one and what we do in different circumstances like this right here what I'm going to do I'm going to combine all three of these into one into one nuke now here's a nook that we're, we got to I'm putting it in let me take it apart here so you'll see what I got going on at the bottom uh, now keep in mind they all do have separate queens that doesn't matter I've never had an issue doing it this way. There, drop my queen. Pick one of the queens out to use to put in your uh, hive, wh whatever you use. Uh, five frame nuke, eight frame, whatever you use. And I just, with ours, I just set it in the bottom like that. We'll put the feeder on like so. Put the lid on so bees don't start flying up in the feeder. And then, and I'll demonstrate one of these, then I'll put it on pause so I can open the lids on the others just to get it started here. Uh, if, you, if you install a number of bees, you'll take a few stings from time to time. And after you install about 10 or 12, a, a, a few of those add up. And the pheromone so does add up as well. If you, sometimes if you'll just blow just a little puff of smoke in them, not much, it'll calm those bees down dramatically when you install these. It'll, it makes a world of difference. You don't have to use much. I don't recommend using much, just a little puff. So, so what I'm going to do, and, and what this does, by shaking these in front of the hive, it avoids getting all those dead bees into your hive. So I'll just simply just shake them out on the ground here like this get as many as I can get I rolled over hit it and then I'll set the cage a little ways away because if not they'll try to go back to that cage now here in a second you'll watch and they'll catch smell of the, the pheromone of the queen and if not, you can nudge them in just a little bit because once they start to march, these are basically like a swarm. Package bees are, are pretty much in swarm mode. They are in swarm mode. So they pretty much behave just like a swarm. But if they don't start going in, which I can see them heading that direction, they're looking. Usually what I'll do, give them a little nudge. You can use your high tool, your hands, whatever, and they'll start going in. And then once they do, they'll all start rolling in. They'll smell that queen. Some of them will start fanning. They'll put a signal out to the other ones. So let me put it on pause, and I'll get these others shook in there. Okay. I got the lids off, as you can see. They're doing the march. They're marching right in. 
you can hear them fanning i can hear the noise they know the queen's in there now this, this is a good technique to to do also if you have just a plain healthy hive and you don't want any dead bees in this works perfect uh, another way is, is people will take out it, it'd be hard to do in a five frame nuke but in a in a t eight or ten frame you take four or five frames out and just set the package down in like that and let them crawl out you can do that as well it leaves the dead bees inside of the the cage that's another way you can do it i like this approach because it leaves them all out on the ground uh you're you're done you don't have to go back in if you get tied up in time with putting the, the cage in the hive uh it can cause a problem if you don't get it out pretty quick so that's one reason i don't like doing that so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna check the other one out just right here in front of it. Doing this barn barnyard bee one ha one handed method as usual. <laughs> and then here's my my other one. Hope I don't make you too dizzy. And then they're all in there, they're all on the ground, and we'll simply just watch them march in. Like I said, this works excellent if uh, if you want to do just a, a, a regular package. It works. It works as well. Once they smell that queen, they will go right in. And here's another thing, and a lot of people don't think about this. By doing it this method, they are actually voluntarily going into the hive. Now, every once in a while, it does happen when you sh when you shake bees, uh, you know, out of say 20 packages, it's possible two or three or four of those may up and leave on you. It's it's possible. It don't always happen, but sometimes it can. But this way, this is basically like a swarm walking into the hive. They it's it's like it puts it in their head like they chose this place because you you dumped them out in front of it and they saw it and they said okay i'm good this is where i'm going so that kind of if you think about it like that that works uh much better in my opinion now it's normally not how i I'd shake packages because it is a slower process because when i install packages uh at the first of the year when we bring in diversity uh from from other yards uh, I go through them really fast and this would be slow now this right here what I'll do I'll just let this sit here all day and then at the end of the day or even tomorrow I'll come back and pick it up and put it on the stand right there right there's where it'll go so those bees even though they they will start orienting orientating to that location their hive is right there behind them so they'll have no problem finding it so that's one thing i wanted to show you and another thing is how to tell if you got a good queen that you bought let me show you this is one way to tell right here if you have a good mated queen it that other bees will pay a lot of attention to her now what whether it's aggressive or acceptance it doesn't matter because it drawed the bees, the pheromone drawed the bees to the queen regardless. Regardless if it, it's an aggressive move, move, or an acceptance mood, move. So if you have, uh, now some people, if you only have a handful of bees in your yard, it may be a little bit harder to tell. But if you have a couple hives and you want to test the quality of your queen, that you may be questioned about where you bought it, set it out like this. and. For just a little bit for about an hour and see how many bees come through it if somebody's trying to push off on you a virgin queen more than likely there will be hardly any bees come to it if any at all because they don't have the pheromone that a mated queen does so without a shadow of a doubt this is a very good mated queen and another way if you want to tell the quality of several different queens that are mated you set 10 of them out the one that's got the most bees on it, I can assure you, is the best mated queen because their pheromones will be stronger and it's a higher quality queen. 
So that's one way to tell. That's uh, something you can do if, if you're buying queens from somebody and you're questioning whether or not it's a virgin or a, a good quality queen. Try this test. Set it out and see what happens. You know, just like the video I did where I hung the mated queen in the tree and it built up a huge swarm. Well, without a doubt, it, it was a good mated queen. So, so I just wanted to pass that along and we'll walk over there real quick and look at the, the package and see how it's doing. Here's that queen that I hung up this morning. Or they actually had her, this is the one that I had sitting on my trailer that I was demonstrating about <clears throat> how to test if you had a good mated queen or not. So what I did, I just took it and uh, you can see right here, I got a little wire that I run through the cage and just hung her up right here. Now it's got a, I don't know, a swarm the size of my hand, maybe a pound of bees, maybe. Pretty small. It'll still, it'll keep building up. It'll end up being pound, pound and a half of bees, but that's, uh, you see my video where I did this before, so uh, sometimes if you want to try that, it works out pretty good. And you can see the wire right here tied to the top of it down to the cage. Let me see if we can pull down the, we can see the cage right there on the top. Right there, you can see the top of the cage. Now what makes this method so good is now you got a queen, the queen that you're going to use in your colony. So you just shake this, or just actually just lay it down in, into your hive and separate the bees and put your bees in there. You got the bee, you got the queen that they're used to, just like a bee in a swarm. That works out very good. You can see they're still coming to it, so it is, it's still building up. So we'll let it build up and see how big it gets. Okay, you can see what's left behind. See all the dead bees in the back? And all the good bees, all the live bees are marching right in. So it'll be 100% clean. There won't be any, any dead bees in there. And they're all out here in the pile. It'll take a while for some of these. Some of these bees may be too sickly to make it in. They, they'll probably not make it in. But the, the healthy bees will march right in. And that's a little tip from Barnyard Bees. Uh, folks, if you need uh, packages, uh, we will have them for uh, about two or three more weeks. And that will be your last chance to get Barnyard Bees packages. Because we're going to stop right at the end of May. So... If you if you want a package this year, uh, we'll have them available until the end of this month. After that, we're done. So uh, don't forget barnyardbees.com. Now queens, as far as queens go, we're finally getting caught up. We should have queens from now until fall. We should have plenty of queens between now and fall. So if you need a barnyard bee mated queen, uh, barnyardbees.com uh, don't forget uh, uh, our beekeeping equipment everything and anything at barnyardbees.com we got it check us out don't forget click on the little bell like and subscribe share our videos uh, coffee bee chat glad I thought that I try to mention this on every video leading up to it March 8th May 18th May 18th of this month coffee bee chat uh for those of you who don't know what it is uh you come in you got free coffee and donuts and we have a number of beekeepers that come in and talk to the new beekeepers or anyone and we chit chat about bees for four hours it's fun everybody loves doing it uh we filmed the last one i'll probably film this one a little bit put it out there where, where people can see it. it it's hard to make anything of it or learn from it on the video because there's so much chatter inside the room uh, but it, it just kind of, kind of fun to watch though, I guess, but you really can't make a lot of it. But if you get a chance, you're within the area. We'll probably have one in May, uh, one in June, maybe. 
and then we'll probably skip all the way then have one we're gonna to try to have one this year in the fall to try to prep and prepare new beekeepers for getting their bees ready for fall so that's about it I jabbered enough uh, I can keep going if I don't stop the video uh, like and subscribe thanks for watching barnyard bees